Hi there, and welcome to part two of helping to make customized videos in teaching. So here we're going to look at stitching the video clips together that we spoke about in part one. So now we have these different video kind of clips. Maybe one might be an introduction. One could be to do with the equipment that you're using uh, and so on, or a sketch that you've screen recorded. And now you want to put them all together and make it look a bit more seamless as one video. So there's three software packages that I'm going to just show you very quickly. And what I'd say to you is look at the description of the YouTube video underneath the video, the show description, and there's timestamps there for each of these. So you can go to each one that you that would um, maybe help you. First, I'm going to show you ScreenFlow for Mac. And this is an Apple software. It's $129 for a once off purchase. So this is what um, I use on my MacBook Pro. I find it really helpful and it's something that's very easy to follow. Now, even if you don't use Mac, I would still recommend you just watch this clip just to see how I use the principles for ScreenFlow, the idea of the video setup and merging and so on. Um, because a lot of the actual principles are the same across the different software packages. There is another one for PC and Mac called Camtasia that's very user friendly. It allows you to do exactly the same things as ScreenFlow. It's 171 for a once off purchase, but you can get a lot of discounts on this um, down to about the 100 euro if you were trying to find it. Um, we have a license for this on the team laptop at the moment that could be borrowed if you want to, to use it. And also, I think if you are just kind of starting out and aren't into kind of merging too many things, but you want a bit of um, editing capabilities. Screencast-O-Matic is something that you've heard of before. It allows once off 15 minute uh, screen records, but there's no editing. So if you make a mistake, it's back to the start again. And it can be used on Mac or PC, but if you sign up for the deluxe version, so this works out at $19.80 $19 uh, per year. And I did this, signed up for a subscription for this deluxe just for a year so I could show you the tutorial here and give you an idea of what you would see if you wanted to get involved in that too. So the deluxe just gives you a bit more power. So these are the three software packages we're going to look at. And the first one, as I said, I'd recommend watching the video of the first one just to get that concept. So let's go into ScreenFlow and get a few video clips and stick them together and see what we can do. Okay, so we're in ScreenFlow here. And as you can see, the top kind of rectangle is where our final video is going to appear when it's ready. Um, the bottom is where we're going to build our particular um, video and edit it. And on the top right, it gives you a few tools like for making the audio louder or designing a box or an arrow or something like that that you want to input into your video. So I, I've uploaded a few clips here. And let's just say these are the, the few different bits that we want to, to merge together. So let's bring over one of them, say this one here is just an ice box and you see the block of video. I've just dragged it and dropped it. Now you see the images across the bottom and you see these bumps across the top. So there's audio associated here. So this was when I was in the lab and I was saying, I'm just going to record myself here with this green uh, bowl and it'll look okay in the end. But I don't particularly want that audio in here. I prefer to have music or I would prefer to narrate over it. So what I can do in ScreenFlow is I can actually detach the audio which means the audio is now separated from the video and I can select it and delete it. So now I'm left with no sound on this video. And um, if I drag it to the start and I press play, um, you'll see it's just panning across an ice box, but there's no sound associated with it because I, I can narrate later on or I can put in music or whatever I want to do next. If I pick um, another particular video, and uh, this is so imagine you have a second fragment, I drag it and I bring it down and I let go. Now. Obviously, I've left a gap between them. If I do that, you'll see that in the video as we play, there'll be a blackout before the next one. Where what we can actually do is put them side by side. And that way, the transition between them is a bit clean. Now, you can see it's gone from one to the other very sharply. Well, a lot of software will be actually able to separate the, um, to merge them together a little bit nicer than that. So again, I have audio here of me talking in the background and I don't want that on the video from when I recorded it in the lab. So I'm going to detach the audio and I'm going to delete that. And then all of a sudden we've now stuck two things together. And so we have two of our video snippets stuck together, which is great. And we can then go up and say, well, I'd like to have something at the start. You know, I don't want it to just be kind of, um, 
something on its own going straight into a video. So what you have a choice here, really, you can take any of these video clips and you can add a freeze frame. And what a freeze frame does is it takes the video, add freeze frame, it takes um, this clip here and it'll make it as like a, an image. And you could use that as your title if you wanted. But you can make one very easy by going to PowerPoint and just taking your slide. So I've taken a slide here. I took a screenshot of a slide from an image and I'm going to put this at the very beginning. Um, but obviously now at the beginning where the red line is there, there's a video and there's a, uh, an image. So what I need to do is kind of move things on a bit, just shift them down a little bit um, and give myself maybe the image first, then the video. Um, and as I move along, maybe I'll overlap these a little bit, the transition between them. Remember, we had them end to end, I'll just put them like a little transition. So now when the video starts and we press play, uh, this is our video. It's got a title, a screenshot that you can narrate and introduce. Now it's gone straight into the first video where it's panned across the ice. And then all of a sudden the transition is a bit more of a uh, from one to the other rather than as kind of a clean cut. And essentially now we've stuck three different video, uh, three, two videos together and we have um, a JPEG at the start. Now you might say, well, I'd like it just to kind of fade in at the start and fade out at the end. And again, there's options here to add things at the start, like a transition. So maybe you want it to start uh, being black and then it's going to fade in. So I, by adding that starting transition, the video will start off black and it'll image will appear. And maybe at the very end, what you'd like to do is actually fade to black. So you can add an ending transition. And here then again, when the end of the video, it'll actually fade to black. So we've in this video put three things together. We put an image at the start and we've put a little overlap and then we've added some fading effects. So what about narration then? Well, what you can do once you have a video with no sound such as this is you can actually plug in your microphone and record yourself narrating over this video. So it means that you can add your voice afterwards to the video that you're doing. If you want some music, you can get some royalty free music or download a license and you can I'm doing it here. We have a song. So now all of a sudden my video changes again. Then when I press play, I now have some music in the background and that music is going to uh, continue as long as I want it to. If you don't want it for the whole song, it's very easy. So this is what I want. One thing I wanted to show you was say we wanted to take a bit out of either the sound or, or, or video or a mistake, or if you did a big a sneeze or a cough that you wanted to delete. Well, what we can do with the music is let's go to a place where we want the music to stop. So we want it to stop once, say, the video is starting. So I'm going to get the select the music and I'm going to ask it to split. So that split means now it's turned into maybe two blocks. And I don't want the one there. I only want the one to start. So that music's going to end pretty suddenly. And again, you might guess that you can also add an ending transition on music so that it gets quieter and quieter and quieter just as you begin to speak. Just like the DJ, um, when you're uh, putting on a song where they're speaking, they can bring in and bring out music. So now we have a song added onto that um, start. We have a few video clips together and we fade it to black. And let's just say that we, we did a big sneeze or a cough in a particular place, we'll say here in the middle of this video. So you want to take a little bit out because that's what a lot of people might do. I just want to show you how you could do that. So we'll go back again and we'll get the options and we'll split the clip. And then say we wanted to take out up to this part here. Well, we will split. So now you see I have a block that I can say add a color to just so that you can see it. So the purple box is the bit now that I split and I split and I don't want this bit anymore. So I'm going to be able to delete that and then just grab everything else and just drag it over to meet the original. And now that bit is gone and you'll never know was never there. So it's a way if you do make an error, it's very easy to go back split things out. So let's just summarize what we did here. We used a video editing software. We put two videos together and we did a little transition between them. Then we added a, a, a solid kind of, um, how would you say, an image at the start. So that's your introductory slide, perhaps or your thumbnail. And we added a fade in and we added a fade out at the end, fade to black and the starting transition. And then we got some music that was royalty free. And um, in my case, this was licensed uh, to have some music. So now you have a video with the different combinations stitched together. So this is using ScreenFlow and um, the process is very easy. I find that 
I have so many options up here. I can uh, select audio, any my own voice, whatever it is, I can select the audio and increase the volume. If I want to be able to track my mouse, I can actually ask the in the in the video where I will use my mouse, I can ask it to track it so that they can see where the mouse, the students or any anyone new viewing the video can follow the video at uh, the mouse moving in certain places and where it's being clicked. And that can be very handy. And then also I can add in different um, uh, pop up boxes or text or different color boxes at certain times. And that can be really helpful in getting people to, to view particular things. So it's just a case of say, adding an annotation. We might want a blue, this is a blue box. So we might want the blue box to come around the PCR reaction like this. And as you see here, it's only going to come up at a particular time. So now when we watch our video, um, there's no blue box, but now it does come up once this red line, this play line comes across. Okay, so we have these options of introducing different things for emphasis, and it can be really helpful to guide someone around a video. So that gives you a very basic idea about how we can stick things together um, in software, how you can bring in music and some of the after effects that you can do if you want. So you might say, well, now I have all this video here and it looks like this. How do I get this video to something a bit more functional? Well, ScreenFlow has a publish option. So you can publish to Vimeo, YouTube, Google Drive, Dropbox, and so on. And when you do that, it'll actually compress all this into one video and then upload that onto your platform. And then you can share that with your audience. So it's a very handy way to build this, combine it. Um, take, videos take up a lot of space, so beware of that with your hard drive, but it's a way in which, a simple way to put things together. So that gives you the basics of how this, how we can use ScreenFlow and some video editing options. Um, I'll show you two other ones that maybe you prefer or ones that um, you can tune into. But I, as I said, you can use the timestamps to skip to the one you want in the show description. Okay, so here we are in Camtasia software. As I mentioned, I, I really recommend watching the ScreenFlow one just so you get the idea of what you can do and what things can look like. So I would definitely go back and watch that one and then maybe consider this software for Mac or PC. So this software is one where you can import your different media. So we can bring in pictures, um, like in the last video, in the ScreenFlow example, we can bring in video or we can bring in music. And our video is going to appear in the middle. Down the bottom, is where we're going to build a video like I showed you. And we have this system where we have green um, and red kind of ideas as to parts we want to cut and clip. It's kind of a color system that they use. Camtasia is um, has a really good kind of getting started guide as well for getting people set up. But it's more that once you have the different pieces of video installed, it's over on the side. It's the idea of all the things that you have here, like say you want to narrate. If you have your video ready, like we saw in the last video of the different bits stuck together, we can mute our speakers, which is really good in case your email alerts go off, but we can start voice recording here. And by pressing here, we will get an audio record that we now can narrate over the video. We can put in annotations by adding in different annotations into the video clip as to what we want, or we could have transitions. So transitions, you can see examples here as I move back and forth. It's how one thing moves to the next. So how one yeah, video is going to move to the next one. Behaviors with regards to text and their movement, how you want it to view and move. Um, various animations between each one, tilts and tilt right and full opacity, how things fade. Um, it just seems very kind of user friendly. And it was one of the reasons we picked that. Uh, for the team project as our as our software on the laptop. So here you can see like highlighting your mouse where it goes. It's a really good learning tool to be able to show exactly and indicate what you want to get across. You can magnify, you can spot, uh, spotlight, so on. So I find that uh, some of the different things we have here, um, as even with your audio that you'll record, you'll be able to change the pitch, um, fade in music with just the click of a button. And I think that can really help you with regards to setting up video if it's something that is very, very new. Um, it's but uh, really the, the, the concept of adding in videos is exactly the same. Okay, so in the media, let's just take some of these different video clips we've got before we can drag them down, you see we have the the video clip and that there's audio attached as well. This was the background sound I mentioned to you that I didn't really want anymore. It was what was being recorded in the lab at the time. So I can separate video and audio, like detach in the last one, and I can delete that. So now I have one video here. I can take my screenshot, the one we took at the start, and I can put the screenshot as my entry level um, 
uh, introduction. I can make it as long or short as I want it to appear for. I can take the second video. So I am I'm going to grab it and drop it down here afterwards. And again, I don't want the sound of me just kind of uh, yapping away in the lab. So I'm going to separate the um, audio and delete that. And then I can have my two different video clips. So how I want these to transition, I can change that afterwards. If I want my music, I can download the music file as we have here. And by pressing play, I now have my music and I have my video clip that's playing here uh, between each one. So I find a lot of these software platforms have very similar overviews. What have I done here? I've put two videos together, took away the audio of me speaking over in the, in the lab that was picked up by the camera microphone. I've added in music and I've added in the slide at the start. If I want to have a, a voice narration, well, I can delete the music and actually just click and start my voice recording as I'm playing the video and it'll record it as an audio file. And then I can play a little bit with some of the after effects, um, the cursor, the mouse, the transition between videos and so on. But I find Camtasia is very drag and drop along the same properties as um, the other software, like, um, ScreenFlow, but that this one is Mac and PC. So it's a standalone package that you can download and install on your computer. Okay, so let's look at another one, which is um, about 20 euros for about the, a year's license that lets you do some of these capabilities as well. Okay, so here we are in the final package called Screencast-O-Matic. You've probably heard about this already because it can be used for short recordings of your screen. And uh, this is the deluxe version. Now, it says deluxe, but it's only a 1980 per year that gets charged. And I think that's a, an, an okay fee to, to have for something that you could use so much. And if you buy a three year license, you can get it even cheaper per month. Now, you see here that I've asked it to record my screen at the moment. It just press new recording. When I open the software, I can ask it to record the webcam, which is uh, essentially me speaking here. Uh, or I can ask it to do both where I will be down in the corner of the recording. So you can change the window size, you can change it using this here, say, uh, or you can drag the corners to what size of your screen you want to record. And that's kind of handy because there might be things outside that you don't want people to see or notes and so on. But remember, the smaller you record, the the smaller the kind of image or the quality that will be there. So at the moment, we have this choice of, of me being in the corner. And um, I can even pick where I want to appear in the video. And um, if there's a particular position, so on that I want. So it's a very handy way by which you can set up your settings and very straightforward. So in in the settings, you pick what you want, you can limit the time so that there'll be a countdown that you can kind of see how long left and um, the size, the narration, you just pick the microphone that you're going to use. And then you can uh, get it to auto adjust that speaker sound. And then if you wanted to record computer audio, so these might be sounds that the computer is making out of its speakers or maybe um, recordings that are there, you can use that as an option. So let's say, for example, we want to record um, both in this case. So we'll press record REC and now three, two, one. So what Screencast-O-Matic is doing right now is it's recording. You see the lines have changed from black and white on the outside to red and white. So we're now recording this window here in the middle. And it's more what we'll be able to do afterwards. So imagine this is the end of the first part of the video. I can go up here and press pause. And now I'm not recording and I can take a bit of a breather, look at my notes, prepare for what I want to say for the second part, and then I can hit record again. And now I'm three, two, and now I'm recording the second part. But what screen Castomatic does is it just automatically sticks those together. So it's nice that you can always press pause and it'll actually stick your different recordings together for you. So let's just stop recording for time being and let's hit done. So let's say we've recorded our seven or eight different pieces of information. So we have a choice now, we can edit, we can share it, or we can save it. So I suppose it's always good to edit it uh, first to make sure everything's okay and how it looks. So it launches this editor system. So this is what I kind of want to, 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 to focus on at the moment. We have this video across the bottom is the actual video itself. So we can scroll through the video and the little bumps that you see here, these little mountains at the bottom, that's effectively your audio sound. And then on the top, you can see we have our uh, video. So it's got a dotted line just here. You can see it. 
And that's where we stopped one video and started the next. So that's where I took the break in between to check my notes. I can turn off the webcam if I don't want it at this stage. So even though I recorded myself speaking, I have the option of turning it on and off. I can include my cursor. So you see the little yellow circle, or if I didn't want to do that for some reason, I can take it off. But it's a very handy way of bringing people around your, your slides or your information or your video or your piece of equipment. Then the key thing here, really, I think for people are these tools menu. So the tools menu gives you a huge option of different things. So let's say, for example, I want to, um, I, I said I had something in my slide that I didn't want everyone to see. Well, I can go in here and I can overlay different things with blur. So I could pick a blur and say I wanted to blur and um, uh, it tells me, well, where do I want to blur and what do I want to actually blur? Well, it's given me a tiny little box in the middle here that I can take and I can stretch and so on by the corner. Go on. Um, there. And what it does then is it blurs out the text or the different information. And I think that's very useful if there's particular text that pops up on the screen that you didn't want someone to see. You can add that blur function for a particular amount of time. You can uh, decide to insert a video. So imagine you have a video recorded somewhere else and we've picked the spot we want to record, insert the video. Well, we can pick, say, a video that I uh, have been playing with here. And that video will now, it says, well, where do you want the insert to happen? So I'm going to want it to just drop in, say, just say here, and I'll say, okay. And now that video has now been, okay. Uh, that video has now been copied and inserted into this video. So now you can imagine you had me speaking at the start through the slides. We blurred out the text and now it's going to flip into this video. Now, the thing is the audio here is actually audio that was on the lab with lids closing and so on. So how do I kind of speak over that video very well? Well, again, what you can do in tools is you can go to narrate and the narrate lets you drag the bar over the area you want to narrate. So you might decide that actually you kind of want to narrate from there to there um, or maybe even a bit longer. And then when you hit start, it'll start recording your voice over that piece of, um, of video and replace the audio that was there. There's options to include a stock library of some music, um, um, but I do think this tools menu that's here should give you an awful lot of things if you wanted things to be sped up a little bit. If there was a part of a clip where you were walking across the lab and you thought that's going too slow, you can speed it up. Or if you wanted just a demonstration to slow it down, the transition is how we go from one part of the video to another. So it might fade. Then we can change uh, work with audio volumes. And um, if something was very low, we might have power to kind of boost it a little bit. And then you can put in arrows highlights text very easily. So if you wanted an arrow again, it says, well, where do you want the arrow to be? And um, you can select the style. So if we want a blue arrow, we could go like this. And we know now then that when we test our system, the arrow will only come up during that little pocket down here. So if we press play, you'll see once we hit the blue dot down the bottom, the arrow appears slowly. It stays for that length of time, and then it'll begin to fade and you can stretch and drag this as you see fit. So I, I really think um, Screencast-O-Matic is a very nice way to um, make your videos. Um, when you're finished, you get options then to upload to YouTube, upload to Screencast-O-Matic, or save it as a video file, like a raw file that you can keep. And that raw file then you could um, have as a backup. But once it's up on a sharing platform, you can decide to share it, be it either private, public, or unlisted. Um, Public means everyone can find it. Uh, unlisted means that the you have to share the link and private means that they have to be invited to view. So I hope that gives you um, an overview of um, three different software packages. And I hope it gives you a way by which you can easily work on these. Just some finishing touches I think you should consider for your videos. The narration is very good to consider after you fuse the video together. We've talked about that a few times. I think it, it lets you narrate from home with a clear microphone and you're not worried about the microphone on the camera being too far away from where you are. Using boxes or arrows, you could add to give attention to a specific point. If you have the idea of the mouse being mo as it moves or the clicking uh, concept so that when you click, there's different uh, shapes that pop up. That can be very helpful for students to kind of follow uh, your video. 
If you want music or a thumbnail at the start, you could maybe brand your videos. So I should mention that in this screen flow overview, how you could do that with a PowerPoint slide. Um, and then consider how you're going to publish, how you're going to share. So if you want just the raw video file, you could still have that as an MP4 and you could still um, upload that to various sites. It just might be large in size, depending on your video, where if you have links on YouTube or Vimeo, just consider, do you want them public, unlisted or private um, before you, you start sharing? So I hope those three sessions um, and three software packages show you the consistency in kind of how things are done. As I mentioned, watching the ScreenFlow one gives you a general overview of what video editing is and what we want to do. So I highly ad advise watching that, that first part. The middle part, Camtasia, was another software package very similar to ScreenFlow. And then finally, Screencast-O-Matic, probably the most economical um, or the least economical impact um, on getting a license, but has the power to generate a video, just maybe not in the extreme HD um, uh, that you have. It depends on the size of your screen that you're actually physically recording, but it's a very straightforward one to use. And it's something that you can go in and use the free version. It's just you don't have the capabilities of the deluxe version that you subscribe to. Um, so it's it's worth considering if that's something that you're you're interested in. In part three of this, we're going to look at helping um, understand audio, the basics of audio recording and how that has such an impact when we're making a video. <laughs>